film and suddenly you're watching a man with a huge donger go on for hours. <laughs> and you're thinking this might have backfired a little bit. <laughs> Hello, what's the crack? What's the story? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm checking out this legend of a man. Make it fly again. Every time I react to me, it makes me laugh. If you guys are loving all these reactions, make sure you subscribe. That's what you can see. Subscribe, push notifications. This is Mickey Talks About Sex. Oh, God. Let's go. I'm going to talk about sex for a little while. Strap in. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it funny now? Sex. Everyone's fucking gone sex mad, haven't they? Every time I'm Are you having the best sex? Are you having the longest sex? Are you having the fucking hardest sex? Woo! <sighs> I blame pornography. <laughs> Consumption of pornography. It's got it out of hand. You couldn't get it in the 70s. You couldn't get it. It was illegal. Men had to go to a dirty cinema, didn't they? They got a Mac and cut the pockets out of it. And they used to have a pair of trousers that they cut the top bit off and just tied it above their knees. And they were thinking he knows a lot about this, didn't he? But no. They were called the Dirty Mac Brigade and they'd go in the cinema, right, and put their hands in their pockets. They'd see like a manual tour or something, have a proper polish. No way. Was I thin? No way that was happening. What? Let me know. Indeed. I'm giving it to in the street here, people. <laughs> and you get to the 80s. Sadly, much more common pornography because you had people sort of, we got the video recorder turned up, didn't it? And suddenly you could get a film. Every factory, every warehouse had a bit of a nonce in it. Things <laughs> you reproduced them. In our factory, it was a geezer called Colin the Polisher. He'd come up and go, I've got some films, Mick, for the weekend, got some films. They're blinding. They're from the continent. He only had three teeth. Fuck me. <laughs> Mahogany, you and Dark Oak. And uh, <laughs> we used to use him as a colour chart. Do you want the Mahogany, you the Dark Oak? He was a proper nonce. Do you want a film for the weekend? <laughs> and what you did was, you got the film for the weekend, three quid, something like that, and you took it home, and you plied the wife with Martini the Bianco. <laughs> right? And then about half past 10, 11, you went, I've got a filming work, babe. I don't know if you fancy watching it. I don't know if you want it. might be good, worth watching. You put the film on, suddenly you're watching a man with a huge donger go on for hours. <laughs> and you're thinking, this might have backfired a little bit. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is not natural, babe, is it? The way that man's shaping up, I think it's very well. Let's cut to the present day. Pornography consumed all day long by people. Hardcore pornography. Horrible pornography. Aggressive pornography. It's reached the point where when teenagers have sex for the first time, they try and strangle each other. <laughs> Is this it? I thought it was going to be more fun than this. This is nothing new, is it? You know, it's been in the news lately about they want the teenager to abstain and things like that. But people, the teenagers are still shagging each other back in the 70s, but they got married if they got someone pregnant. You met your mate down the pub, and said, Oh, you know that Tracy. You know, I told you I fucked her. She's having a baby. You go, Oh, well, that's you finished then, isn't it? Do you want a game of pool? Lives in the balance. I like nudity indoors. I don't like public nudity. I've tried it. Me and my wife went on a little Greek holiday once and she talked me into going to the bleeding nudist beach. Now, there's a problem if you're a male from the UK. You've been covering your penis up for legal reasons all of your adult life. And suddenly, you're just walking about in front of people. And the penis is not having it. It goes, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? You're going to get us nicked. And it hides in the pubes. <laughs> and suddenly you're standing there with a vagina. <laughs> this is nice. Because <laughs> you can't do what you do after five aside or swimming when most men give it a little tug and liven it up a little bit. <laughs> 
just have to use the powers of concentration to get it somewhere between flaccid and lob on, somewhere right in the middle. <laughs> I'm laying there on the sunbed, I'm in bits. I'm, like, I'm trying to maintain some sort of dignity. I looked at my wife, I said, this is the worst day of my life. I need a drink. I said, I'm going to that bar at the back. Do you think you have to put your clothes on? She said, don't be stupid, it's a nudist beach. I went bowling into the bar. You do have to put your clothes on. <laughs> Never has a lager taken so long to pour. <laughs> a slow realisation that everyone else has got their clothes on. Grappia. <laughs> yeah. So, it's creating problems with couples. I met an eminent sex therapist, right, as part of my latest Sky show, and I was talking to her about the consumption of pornography. She said it's causing big problems with couples, Mick. Big problems. She said we're having a major issue with pegging, right? Pegging, right, for those who don't know, is when the, uh, the female of the species, who is more deadly than the male, right, she puts on a strap-on dildo and she penetrates the man anally. Not annually, that's a completely different thing, right? Just, just pays into it. So the women are seeing it and thinking, aye, aye, I fancy a bit of that. But there's a lot of men who don't want to be pegged. It's great intention amongst couples, right? So I said to the sex therapist, she's top of her game, she's, you know, she does TED Talks, she knows what she's talking about. I said, right, you've got a couple. The woman wants to peg, the man don't want to be pegged. What's your advice? She said, Michael, I tell him to try it at least once. I said, well, how does this help? So she said, it's good for the man, because the first time in his sexual life, he has to partake in an act that he's not particularly keen on, yet has to show some level of appreciation for. I thought, right, I'm getting it. Right on, sister. I said, but given that the dildo is rubberized and has no sensation, what's really going on here? <laughs> she said, Michael, this is about control, power, but ultimately, revenge. <laughs> I said, revenge? She said, yes. I said, revenge for what? She said, I believe this is revenge for the facial, right? <laughs> so I said, revenge for the facial. So she said, yes. She said, for many, many years, men were happy to ejaculate on the breasts. This was the holy grail. It was called a pearl necklace, right? But this, is what, this was their big end. Uh, she said, but they're not happy now unless the woman ends up looking like a plasterer's radio at the end of the session. <laughs> She's going to be a current fan in the sun. A radio. Oh my God. What a picture. A plast. Can you picture that? A pl this guy and Peter K, they know how to paint a picture. A dirty picture. <laughs> oh Lord. Done before anyone's had a good time. <laughs> and women are sick of it. What I'm trying to say, lads, is if at, if at some point in the not too distant future you catch yourself over the kitchen table, <laughs> biting on a dishcloth, <laughs> while she tears into you, <laughs> you sort of bought it on yourself, didn't you, really? <laughs> so. I thought I'd do that bit at the next Royal Variety performance. What do you think? <laughs> yeah? I won't be doing that again. They keep on asking me to do it. I'm not bowing and scraping in front of that big-eared cunt. No fucking... <laughs> Here's a counter voice, royal family. Fuck off the lot of you. Get a job. <laughs> you out or where you at? That ending was something else. Oh my god! Oh lord! Yeah, I really enjoyed that. This geezer makes me laugh. I feel like not a lot of comedians make me laugh the way he does. Like when I laugh, I'm like, ah, I'm literally all out. E and Peter K, they're so good at that. Yeah, if you guys please introduce me to comedians like this. I keep saying it. Please 
I want to see more comedians like bridge comedians like this. There's so many of them, but I just don't know them. I'm getting to know them. If you guys like that, push the notification points. So you can see when I post. I post twice, at least twice a day. Three times, most times. Yeah, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.